So today in this lecture we are going to discuss the mechanisms that are used by the tissues to control their blood flow. Basically we are discussing the local and humoral control of blood flow by the tissues and we have discussed that different tissues in the human body control their own blood flow through different mechanisms and different tissues of the human body have different blood supply. The kidneys, the liver, the brain, the lungs, the heart, the skin and the muscles, each and every tissue of the human body has a specific blood supply and it, it has its own mechanisms to control its own blood supply. Although the heart is pumping the blood into the each and every organ of the human body, but the blood flow is basically also controlled through local mechanisms and humoral mechanisms. We will discuss the humoral control uh, in the coming lectures, but we are now discussing the local mechanisms that are used by the tissues to control their own blood flow. Now, like how the muscles, the kidneys, the liver, the skin, the muscles, how they control their own blood flow, how sometimes the blood flow to these organs is less, how sometimes the blood flow to these organs is high. Now there are basically two big basic mechanisms, two basic mechanisms that are used by the tissues. So the first mechanism is acute control. Like acute control is basically the rapid changes in the local, in local vasodilation or vasoconstriction of the arterioles, met arterioles and pre-capillary sphincters occurring within seconds to minutes to provide very rapid maintenance of local blood flow. So basically when the blood vessel starts, it starts with the aorta, it becomes the artery, then it becomes the arteriole, then it becomes the capillary and before the capillary we have a pre-capillary sphincter. So the acute control is basically due to the increase in size or decrease in size, the vasodilation or the vasoconstriction the local vasodilation or the vasoconstriction of the arterioles, the arterioles, the met arterioles or the precapillary sphincters that occurs within seconds to minutes that occur very rapidly and it basically provide very very rapid maintenance of the blood flow. Like for example if a person starts exercising and there is a sudden increase in the demand of blood flow to a muscle then changes will occur the in the blood vessels that are supplying to the muscle so that the blood flow to the muscle can increase that changes basically are occurring locally at the level of this tissue so basically this muscle is controlling increasing or decreasing its blood supply that's all about the local that's its local control of blood flow and that's the control of the blood flow by the tissue itself so acute control is rapid control, it's basically due to the vasodilation or vasoconstriction of the arterioles or met arterioles or the precapillary sphincters and that occurs in seconds to minutes and it's the, the purpose of the acute control is to pro provide very rapid maintenance of blood flow. Now the, the factors responsible for the acute control are basically the, the metabolism of the tissue the metabolism or the, the, the consumption of the nutrients by the tissue, it increases or decreases, which basically increase or decrease the blood flow to that tissue. That is one mechanism, that is one mechanism which we will basically discuss in detail in coming lectures. But the effect of tissue metabolism is one factor in the acute control of blood flow. The second mechanism in the acute control of blood flow is basically the oxygen. The increase or the decrease in the availability of the oxygen to a tissue, muscle, skin or kidney or heart is another factor in the acute or rapid control of blood flow to their tissue. The second mechanism of the blood flow control by the tissue is basically the long term control. So long, long term control is basically the slow control changes in flow or a period of days, weeks or months. Here the changes was very much rapid, rapid changes occurring in seconds to minutes. 
Here the, the here we have slow control changes that occurs in days or weeks or months. These changes basically provide better control of blood flow in proportion to needs of the tissue. So the the control even in the long term is all due to the needs of the tissue. Then again if we have this muscle and it is uh, a person is exercising regularly for a long period of time then the acute changes that will occur acutely rapidly but there will some long term changes will also occur and that long term changes will occur that include these changes come about as a result of increase or decrease in sizes or number of blood vessels. So the number of blood vessels will increase or decrease. Here the size of the, the existing blood vessel will increase or decre decrease to, to compensate for the acute, the rapid change in the metabolism or the rapid change in the oxygen availability of the tissue. In the long term control the changes are basically occurring in this the number of blood sub vessels that that are supplying to that tissue that number of blood vessels are either increasing or decreasing and these changes are basically slow they occur in days weeks or months they are not occurring in seconds or minutes and they basically provide better control of blood flow so the acute changes occur rapidly, the long term changes occur slowly. The acute changes are basically due to the vasodilation or vasoconstriction of the arterioles, met arterioles or precapillary sphincters. The long term changes are basically due to the increase or decrease in the number of the number or the size of the blood vessels. And the acute control, basically the acute changes occur due to the rapid changes in the tissue metabolism or due to the availability or the demand of the oxygen. The long term changes the increase or the decrease in the number or the size of the blood vessels to any tissue, any tissue that may be kidney, the liver, the heart, the skin or the muscles, it's basically due to the tissue vascularity, the tissue vascularity, this is one factor, like the, the vascular changes that are occurring. The demand for increased vessels and then the, the role of oxygen, the high demand for oxygen in a, in a tissue and it also occur basically due to the collateral circulation. So the metabolism and oxygen availability plays an active role in the acute control of blood flow but uh, the tissue vascularity increase or decrease in the number of vessels the increase or decrease supply of oxygen to a tissue and increase in collateral circulation to a tissue basically plays a role in the long term control of the blood flow. So basically these are the two mechanisms of blood flow through which the tissues control their own blood flow, the acute control and the long term control. In the next lecture we are going to discuss the acute control in detail we are going to discuss how the effect of tissue metabolism and how the uh, effect of oxygen availability in the tissue in, uh, basically lead to increase or decrease in the blood flow to a particular tissue. After that we will basically discuss the different theories that explain how the changes in the tissue metabolism or how the supply, how the increase or decrease availability of the oxygen will lead to acute changes in the uh, supply of blood to any tissue and then we will go to the long term control of the uh, blood vessel uh, blood flow to any tissue and then we will discuss in detail how the tissue vascularity uh, then we uh, we will discuss the role of oxygen and we will also discuss the development of collateral circulation in detail that how they play their role in the uh, long term control of the blood flow so that's all about the mechanism of blood flow the acute control of the blood flow and the long term control of the blood flow. Thanks a lot for watching the video.